What's up you guys? I'm finally making another video. Um, turns out that YouTube is hard um, and making videos can be intimidating, but I have finally got my stuff together and I have some tips that I want to share with you guys about starting out in Satanism because that can be a pretty intimidating thing. It can be a little bit scary to walk into a room and say, hey guys, I'm a Satanist. Nice to meet you. Um, it usually doesn't go over well in most public scenarios, <laughs> um, but there's by no means do you have to do that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of share some things that I've gathered and written down um, that I kind of do because I still consider myself a starting out in Satanism. Um, and, and I think it can be kind of difficult to to dig through what's fake and what's real. So this is some more realistic stuff that you can do on your own and be a Satanist. So this is assuming that you have at least checked out um, really the, the two websites that I recommend people go to is the website for the Satanic Temple and the website for Church of Satan. Um, I think those two websites will really kind of give you a clear view on what Satanism is from two different perspectives of Satanism. Um, if you agree with the majority of what either of those two websites say, then you probably will want to pursue some kind of path in Satanism. If you're watching my videos, you're probably going to want to pursue some kind of path in Satanism. Uh, so now that you, I mean, you have access to those websites and you can do endless research from those websites alone, but also try to expand a little bit, you know, maybe read some articles that might not seem, um, you know, that don't come straight from a Satanist website, but just try to take from it um, and agree with what you agree with, I guess. Um, definitely purchase a copy of the Satanic Bible. I actually have mine right here. Um, I haven't finished it, but I'm making my way. It is a really great resource to have. I started with the Satanic Witch, also have it right here. Um, and I think it's a good resource as well. Um, but there was a lot that I just didn't really agree with. Um, I think it was a little bit old school minded, I guess, and the way that modern people are and the way that most modern people think. Uh, some of the stuff is a little bit offensive, but if you can look past that, I do think it has some really good information. Um, and understand that what you read in the Satanic Bible and the Satanic Witch and really any text that you find is not the only brand of Satanism. You know, there are many different views and many different outlooks on it. So don't feel that you have to agree with everything because like any religion, there's so many different paths that you can take from it. Um, but to most people, most people I feel like worship, uh, are atheistic Satanists. Of course, there are hundreds and millions of theistic Satanists, and I do eventually want to cover theistic Satanism on this channel, but for now, that's not where I'm at. So I want to kind of focus on like what I know a little bit better and then um, expand and learn about some different stuff like theistic Satanism because it is very interesting and it is real. Um, but to most atheistic Satanists, um, Satan isn't a devil to be worshipped, but he's a projection um, of your own highest potential as the Satanist. So he is you at your greatest most embraced human form, basically. I talk with my hands so much, <laughs> I distract myself, I swear. Um, and so you're gonna want to familiarize yourself with some of the key satanic, I mean, at least the nine satanic statements and the nine satanic sins, um, but also the satanic tenets. I believe there's seven of those, and I covered those in my very first video of an introduction to Satanism. Uh, famili yeah, familiarize with yourself with those things and try to adopt them into your life and into your daily practice. Um, the best way to become a Satanist is to simply follow that code and embellish it into your own life, force it into your own life, um, really adopt the things that, you know, are key points <laughs> in, in, our, in, our, in our tenets and our, our statements. And then also avoid things that don't bring you happiness or success. Um, 
and I, when I tell people that that's kind of a key point of Satanism, they're like, well, that sounds kind of self-helpy. It doesn't really sound like something I would expect to hear um, emphasized from a Satanist group. And I think a lot of people are surprised that a lot of what Satanism is is truly caring about the self and about loved ones and people who love you back. Um, yeah, it, it's it, it's really emphasized on caring about yourself and making sure that ultimately you are your top priority. Because I think it's really easy to get misguided and, and put other people before yourself and that can really I mean, make, make people sick. You stop caring about yourself because you're so worried about other people and other people's emotions. Um, popular lies that are spread by bigger popular religions can be seen as social cancer because they destroy humanity by banning what makes people human. Uh, don't fear, oh, this is kind of like jumping points because when I was taking notes, I just go, um, but but yeah, you, if you notice a lot, and I, I really hate just calling out Christianity because honestly it's a lot of religions, it's not just them. They're easy to pick on because they're the biggest, but you know, Christianity, Islam, even Buddhism, it, it really kind of limits your desires and, and, and your, your urges and what you want and what you need as a human. It really inspires a lot of guilt in those things, and you want to avoid that. Um, you, you shouldn't feel any guilt um, for what makes you human. And, and don't fear hating people. I, I, I say this... Bah, I don't know how I say this. Don't, don't just go out hating everybody, you know, all of your enemies. Just hate them passionately you should but don't hate them actively you know don't seek out revenge all, all the time you know don't waste your time and energy hating somebody that I think that's kind of pointless um, however you shouldn't deny your hatred of someone you shouldn't say well hates a hates a strong word you know hates a bad word and a lot of people are going to disagree with me I'm not saying this is what you should do I'm saying this is what is common practice in the Satanist community you don't have to hate anybody but as a Satanist you really should embrace that anger and that hatred because it is a true raw human emotion and sometimes stifling those things can lead to bigger issues um, yeah, like a lot of practitioners in the witchcraft world say, um, you know, they don't want to hex people or curse people because they believe that they'll get that back. But if this person has wronged you in some way or hurt you or attacked you, threatened you, whatever, um, they have kind of put out that bad energy into the universe. And who is to say that you are not the one to retaliate that bad energy back to them in a hex or a curse or you know whatever you decide to do um, you, you shouldn't feel scared or limited um, of, of the black magic because it's not something to be afraid of it's not evil um, doing selfish magic is not a bad thing and then karma is not going to you know strike you down because of it Satanist sees that it's uh, God it's not God if being concerned with human suffering, but God is basically responsible for the goings on of the universe. Um, and that is man, basically. So that, that kind of, I worded that in a really confusing way, but I guess to allow people to understand Satan and God better and how Satan sees God, um, because Satan is not a devil, you know, and God is not a spiritual being. Neither, none of them are beings. It's all you and your own power. And so if everyone is a God, God controls the universe in a way that, yes, we all control society and we control what happens in the universe. Um, as individuals, we can use our magic to control what happens in our own personal universes. Um, Praying inspires apprehension because you are asking and begging a higher being to give you something. Um, so try to avoid praying. Try to avoid more 
positive, uplifting uh, dialogue with yourself in a, in a magical way, as if you were praying, but you're more so having a conversation with yourself, your higher self, the self that's going to manifest your reality along with your work in this physical world. Um, yeah, so it inspires apprehension. You're doubting your own magic. Um, avoid, you know, I'll give you some examples, but try to use I will statements and, you know, uh, more positive. So instead of, right, here are my examples. <laughs> All right, so for this first example, let's say that you have a test coming up. Instead of praying to God, saying, oh God, please let me pass this test. Please give me the knowledge and the wisdom to pass this test. Um, don't ask for anything. Say, I will pass this test. I'm smart, knowledgeable on this subject, and I will pass this test. Another common example that I like to use is getting a job interview. A lot of people will pray saying, please God, give me this job. Uh, please let me see that I am the best candidate for this job. I need this job. Uh, using like, please, let me, give me, I need, they're all doubt inspiring words that ultimately will not give you what you want. You need to say something more along the, more along the lines of, I will get this job. I am the most qualified candidate. This job is mine. You know, you have to, no, don't leave any room for doubt that this job might not be yours. Or whatever the situation may be, you can't leave room for please, I need, I want, give to me, you know, allow me. You know, it's all, you have to make the decision for yourself. It can't be made for you. And keeping a confident, positive narrative in your head and in writing spells, affirmations, that will do great things for you in the long run. And not just magically, if you have low self-confidence or even if you don't, anybody can use the benefits from having those positive affirmations and just having a positive narrative in your head because I think for so long, a lot of us have not. <laughs> a lot of us have put ourselves down for years and to be a Satanist, you can't do that. If you're going to be your own God, you have to start caring about yourself a lot more. Okay, so I want to kind of explain the um, different sins from the point of a Satanist and kind of how we justify owning those things in our lives and in our practices rather than denying ourselves of them. Um, in the Christian's eye, these things are blown out of proportion and they are kind of taken um, with compulsion rather than indulgence. Uh, so envy is to look with favor upon the things that other people have. And this kind of goes hand in hand with greed, wanting what other people have, wanting more things than what you already have. And we would all be lying if we were not guilty of this. And it's not a bad thing to be guilty of because if we didn't desire other things and if we didn't see things that other people had and want those things, I mean, we would never have anything. And not that that's the worst thing in the world, but I think a lot of people derive happiness from material items, whether they're willing to admit it or not. Um, so we'd simply just be lacking ourselves the little, little bits of happiness that we get from these material items. And Truly, that's harmless, as long as, again, in moderation, you're not buying everything you see and hoarding everything, taking everything for yourself. You know, you have to do it and care for yourself still. Don't overindulge, just indulge. And again, now I'm going into gluttony. So gluttony is simply eating more than what you need to keep yourself alive. And again, everyone would be lying if they said they weren't guilty of this. There are very few people on this earth, aside from the starving and the poor and the impoverished, there are very few people who, middle class, are eating the exact amount they need to survive. Uh, many, many people eat more than they need to, whether they're bored or they just have more. Or, you know, they eat till they're full and then a little bit more, you know? It's just human nature, it's part of what we do. It helps enrich our lives. Again, we cannot overindulge, we must simply just indulge. A lot of Satanists like to say that if you were to overindulge and overeat, pride would then kick in. 
um, and, uh, <laughs> and pride would kick in and allow you to maintain your appearance. And people also fall victim to pride when they uh, wear clothing that does not serve to keep them warm or to protect them. Uh, just having an, an ambulance or a pendant on your neck, that's a symbol of pride. Uh, you know, you, you saw this thing and you liked it and you thought that, oh, maybe, I mean, in my case, it represents me. I like this. I'm going to wear it. I'm prideful of it. And that's okay. You can be prideful. You're a human being. Sloth, everyone, again, everyone is guilty of all of these things, and that's why the church used them to bind you with guilt forever. Not you personally, just the hypothetical you. Um, and anyone who lies in bed for an extra five minutes because they don't want to get out of bed to go to work in the morning, you, yes, are a victim of sloth. That is okay. Everybody likes to sit on the couch when they get off of work or home from school. Everybody likes to lay in bed for an extra five minutes. You know, we're, we're people of comfort, creatures of comfort, and that is okay. Um, oh yes, and then sometimes if you stay in bed for a little too long, you can lead to another um, so-called sin which is lust. And this is one of, I think, the silliest ones because if we no longer gave in to our lustful desires, the human race would die off forever. Um, so, some people consider this one of man's strongest instincts, um, the first being self-preservation. And the church took this as an advantage um, to really hold people guilty and, and really take control of people psychologically. Um, and of course, I think I covered them all. The last one is anger. Uh, we become anger, eh, angry when we are threatened or attacked, which helps keep us alive. Um, we must protect ourselves. And if someone threatens us and we don't become angry and raise our own fists, we're going to die. Um, obviously, in real life, we don't really face this too often, but you can use it hypothetically. But you have to protect yourself regardless. Um, they, uh, in the Satanic Bible, it says, Be as a lion in the path. Be dangerous even in defeat. The thing that bears repeating um, is the personal relationship with the Satanists themselves must remain positive and confident. Um, when being your own god, again, you really have to care about yourself a lot more than you probably have been. These things, all in compulsion, can lead to bad things and bad self-care. It's up to you to care about yourself enough and monitor all of these things that you're indulging in to not allow overindulgence and compulsion and addiction in these things. You have to watch out for yourself. You can't be worried about pleasing someone else or fearing some kind of God. You have to look out for yourself. Be proud of these traits in yourself. They are what make you human. You have to embrace them. You cannot deny them because, again, literally, it's what makes you human. It's what makes you a truly magical, beautiful, powerful, sexual human being. Okay, I'm going to speed through this next part because it's kind of repetitive. I feel like I say this a lot already, um, and it's really just avoiding excessive intakes of pop culture. Many Satanists believe that ideas spread through mass and mainstream media contain ideas that can be toxic to the strong-minded individual. Um, Groupthink is important and it definitely does have its place in society. I'm not denying groupthink or community or whatever, nothing like that. Uh, but often it can be used in, in tricky ways, um, <laughs> tricky ways and harmful ways to force the individual away from independent thoughts and motivations. Um, kind of using using those tools as a distraction to keep you um, cloudy. See, this is the best way I can think to put it. Um, things like celebrity news, big new trends that change literally every couple of weeks, 
um, sporting events, anything that can be used to distract the population, like the drop of a hat. So don't fall victim. You have to stay alert, look at the signs, protect yourself from popular opinion. And there are some issues with this because yes, of course, if you really, really, really love baseball or whatever, um, don't deny yourself of loving that. But if you love it just because it's new and you've never heard of it before and it's interesting, be mindful, be careful. It could be a trap. And I, and I know that this is like, people are gonna think this is more of conspiracy theorist stuff, but it's not, it's satanic. And it's a message that is very clear in the satanic Bible. You have to be wary of what the mass media and what the elitist groups are trying to put into your mind. They work in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, so, wow, okay, I did get through that pretty fast with the whole popular culture, um, yeah, so that's, guys, scraping the surface. A lot of it is really self-care and looking out for yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Don't deny yourself. Make sure you're analyzing, looking out for yourself, and you're not overindulging. But never, ever allow yourself to feel guilty about any of these things, because I assure you, they're all normal, they're all human, and they're all beautiful. They make life beautiful, they enrich life, and it's a part of why we're all here. So I, that's all I've got for you guys. That's that's all I've got to say. I'm really glad that I finally did this. Um, and hopefully it won't be too long before my next video. So stay strong, you guys, and hail Satan.